20 million years ago, volcanic eruptions ripped giant gashes in the northwest corner of the continent. The fiery cataclysm pierced the heart of behemoth Lake Bonneville, which covered much of the land, causing it to drain through these crevices and into the sea. The remaining river came to be known as the Snake, and canyons like this 81-mile stretch in what is now southwestern Idaho became its home. The abundant moisture nurtured vegetation in the barren land. Grasses and sage took hold. Creatures began to appear. Insects flourished in the hot, dry, high desert temperatures. Reptiles sunned themselves on basalt boulders abandoned by the glaciers. Jackrabbits and ground squirrels burrowed in the fine textured volcanic soil. Small birds came to water and feed on the insects. The broad river became a major stopover for migrating waterfowl. And when larger birds, eagles, hawks, and falcons discovered the burgeoning community of their favorite prey, they too settled in and began to call the canyon home. We are in the Morley Nelson Snake River Birds of Prey National Conservation Area. This is truly a unique place. The canyons you see behind me, along with the adjacent uplands, support the highest known concentration of cliff nesting birds of prey in the world. There are a number of reasons why raptor densities are so high here. The canyon walls are composed of highly fractured basalt and are full of potholes, ledges, cavities, and other areas where the birds can nest. It's something like a New York City apartment complex. Well, I was aware of the canyon, but I was not aware of the significance of the birds of prey. I was a state senator for four terms before I was elected governor. It's a tremendous uh, facility, not only for the tourism aspect of people visiting and seeing it, but the perpetuation of the species that are here. More than 700 pairs of raptors, 15 different species, nest along these sheer cliffs. Another nine species use this important hunting area during their annual migration. Many spend the winter here. The prevailing winds, when they strike the canyon walls, they're deflected upward. And this creates updrafts, which the birds need to gain altitude and soar, which in turn facilitates hunting. In the upland areas, we see convection currents. The sun warms the ground, creates updrafts, and so we see wind conditions that are highly appropriate for these birds to hunt and forage across the upland areas. For the first humans, the canyon was a coveted hunting and fishing haven. Later, others would discover another use for the river. Still others saw the canyon as a unique living laboratory, a geological masterpiece that offers a perfect set of conditions for birds of prey to thrive. Among these was a young soil scientist named Morley Nelson. One look at the canyon and he knew he had found his destiny. Later on when I was governor, uh, I uh, visited the, the canyon a couple of times when we were trying to get the designation of the, of the withdrawal for the birds of prey. And uh, I was involved with Morley. He had a total interest in what had to be done to protect and perpetuate the birds of prey. Morley had been fascinated with raptors since he first saw them as a young North Dakota farm boy. Aided by the remarkable conditions inherent in the canyon's ecostructure, his studies took on new meaning. They would lead him to become one of the world's foremost experts on birds of prey and an international leader in their conservation. Such was the level of respect for the man and his work that in 2009, the canyon was rechristened in his name. If Dad was here, he'd say, thank you for coming out to support us old eagles. That's what he'd say. Thanks to its preservation, scientists continue to gather invaluable data on birds of prey from this unique living laboratory. But preservation does not mean excluding man. Each year, more than 150,000 visitors journey to the canyon, camping, biking, floating the river, hunting and fishing, or simply enjoying a day in the high desert. Eyes skyward, 
hoping to catch a glimpse of the awe-inspiring inhabitants that have made this canyon a true natural wonder. It has to be at the very top of the list when it comes to uh, the attractions that we have. We've got wild and scenic rivers, we've got uh, outstanding hunting and fishing, we've got all of the outdoor sports that you can think of, but it is at the very top of the list when it comes to the scientific value that is here in the development of birds of prey, the protection of the birds of prey worldwide. Morley's message rang true well beyond Idaho, and celebrities like Walt Disney, Paul Newman, John Denver, and Lynn Redgrave lent their support. These cliffs here in Idaho's Snake River Canyon are home to one of the densest populations of raptors on the North American continent. This is what scientists call the vertical environment, where the eagles and the falcons rule, an environment unlike any other in nature. Few other places on the planet can lay claim to such a unique collection of natural circumstances that benefit raptors. But even though it's preserved, it is not completely protected. For tens of thousands of years, the world's vertical environments have been a haven to these rulers of the sky. But we're beginning to understand just how easily and how quickly we can destroy nature's finely crafted balance. Over 60% of the Snake River Birds of Prey area has been converted from the native bunch grass sagebrush community into basically a sea of grassland. There was always a continual threat of outside uses that would encroach upon uh, the birds of prey area that didn't involve the, the commercial agricultural uses, but noxious weeds impact, uh, off-road vehicles out there tearing up the landscape, uh, fire that uh, would denude an area. Uh, we have to protect against those types of impacts. I, I, we've done a pretty good job of that, but the threat is still there, and we can't, you can't go to sleep. You, you, you can't close your eyes. You can't, you can't just accept somebody's word that, well, we'll take care of that somehow. You, you've got to make certain that we do. The passion and dedication of Cecil Andrus, Morley Nelson, and others like them for preserving this unique ecological wonder inspired a generation. It is incumbent upon us to pass their legacy on, to instill in each new generation an equally fierce desire to keep this canyon alive, not only for these magnificent hunters of the sky, but for everyone. I spent 10 years of my life down here in the canyon and in the adjacent uplands nearly every day. I'm always amazed by the numbers of birds here is unlike anything I've seen in my experience. We must try to halt the habitat changes here and even if possible, reverse them. Raptors have inspired every culture in the world with their breathtaking ability in the air. While their Snake River Canyon home may be in jeopardy, today's preservation efforts and public awareness will continue to preserve this Southwest Idaho gem for future generations. <laughs>